Then the, the Greek counterpart is used in Luke chapter 1, talking about Mary conceiving. So it's rakaf in Hebrew, it's episkiazo in Greek. It's usually translated overshadow, because it has to do with sort of a light, and then enveloping in this haze or brilliance of glory. It's like, it's like same concept, just a different word. And she says, how can I have a baby? I'm a virgin. I'm not married. He said, well, the Holy Spirit is going to hover around you. Can you imagine? And when he's finished, you'll be pregnant with God. God's going to put himself into a microscopic seed. Holy Spirit's going to hover around you and put that in your womb and you'd be pregnant with the eternal God. And she said, well, okay. What do you say to that, huh? And he says, you know, it goes on to say, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. But the real, the, the, the real literal translation of that verse, and I've, I've studied it many times, you can't get any more literal or accurate than what I'm about to say. Here's what that verse really says. It doesn't really say with God, nothing will be impossible. It really says, for no word spoken by God is without power. For no word spoken by God is without power. I'm here as the messenger of the Lord, the angel said. And I'm telling you this is going to happen. Now it's going to happen. Well, how? Holy Spirit's coming to hover around you. And he's going to re do something to reproduce himself. So, now that's the word, by the way, at transfiguration, when... Holy Spirit overshadowed the mountain and Jesus. It's also the word in the book of Acts in chapter 5, verse 15, when there were so many miracles taking place through the apostles and the early church, the first, when, when things really broke out after Pentecost, there were so many miracles taking place. So many people were coming that they had to move it out, move all the meetings outside. There was no room in any of the houses or places. To, so they just moved outside and they would line them up in the streets and as many it's as many were were coming and being healed and then the two or three verses later it says all of them and then it says they tried to they tried to get in peter's shadow well that used to fascinate me because i wondered you know how does his shadow heal somebody then i found this word to realize it's not saying his shadow healed them it's saying they got into the overshadowing that was happening as he was ministering. Holy Spirit was just radiating and m moving in the streets of Jerusalem and, and all of a sudden they got within a certain proximity of it and they stepped in the hovering and miracle. You could have just, <laughs> I love this stuff. You could have just come to all these meetings for that one little nugget, and you you never said, "Man, that's good." I would I'd have gone just to hear that. Jackie's too, but I mean that was good. Because I'm not talking about my message; I'm talking about that truth. You get in the hovering. This is what happens when we gather, and if you have any discernment, you know, or a certain level of it at least, you get in certain gatherings. You can feel. The presence of God beginning to intensify in the room. We, 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 we try to find language for it. It got thick. It was really heavy. God was moving. Well, he, he, he came into the room and his presence comes with various levels and degrees. He's always with me, but when we come together, he, he's with us in a different way. So this hovering... This rock coughing, this episkiazo. It's linked to two words in Hebrew. 
that are translated in several different ways, but they mean the same thing regardless of how they're translated. They have to do with birthing. Remember I told you rakaf is a reproductive word. So they have to do with birthing, and sometimes they're translated bring forth or brought forth. Not, not, just, not just humans. It'd be the word for he makes the deer to calve. This would be one of the two words. Yalad and kul in Hebrew. Psalm 90 verse 2 says, before the mountains were brought forth. So it's not just, so it's not just these words aren't just used for animals. They used it for a symbolic sort of picture, you know, when he's talking about creation. So before the mountains were brought forth or ever thou didst give birth to the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting year God. So they're used to describe the birthing and the bringing forth of something, whether it's an animal, a person, or just something that God created. You could, you could birth an idea and you could use one of these words. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, this is, so you get the concept. But the words also, especially one of them, the one cool, is, is translated travail. When Zion travailed, she brought forth. So the concept in the church over the years came uh, that, you know, because tra tra travail to us is a word that means stay out of her way. <laughs> Do whatever she says. I helped my wife through travail and told, told her what to do and when to breathe for about the first 15 minutes. And then she told me when to breathe. I said, <laughs> she told me where to stand and what to do. It worked just fine as long as I did what she said. Because travail is, is obviously a word that means sort of agonizing or hard work. So it's okay to, to translate these words that way because since the fall, childbirth became something that was hard for a, a woman. But it's also the same word, you know, when it's an animal or what I described earlier. So it doesn't, these words don't have to mean agonizing work. I need you to know that, okay? for what I'm about to say. So over the years, when we talked about travail in the context of prayer, it was only used to describe a person, usually a woman, who was in such throes of intercession and burden that she was just crying out or screaming or groaning, which I'm okay with, by the way. I believe that that, that, that level of intercession takes place what isn't what I don't agree with is that the only thing that describes birthing prayer is when that happens now remember that I said it's the same word just because it's translated when Zion travailed that, that doesn't mean it's always that sort of hard work stuff because it's the same word as bring forth and birth and the mountains. So in, nine, in Psalm 90 verse 2, those two words, which are translated travail elsewhere, are used to describe what Holy Spirit did in Genesis 1. Now you know why I did that. I just went full circle. So even though I believe in that level or that aspect of intercession that can become so agonizing and crying out even though I believe in that it doesn't have to be that because how many of you know Holy Spirit was not in Genesis 1 when he was doing this I, I wasn't there but I don't believe that he was going Aah! trying to bring it forth <laughs> 